mirror matchup yet and there are some people currently in the cra in the audience right now who aren't happy that we didn't show the, that are unhappy that we didn't show the pvp but the viewers did speak so unfortunately well unfortunately for them fortunately for everyone else we are about to show you two outstanding players yeah exactly i mean right now in wings of liberty tvt goes one of two ways it's over in 10 minutes or it's over in 50. Um, with the addition of the new factory units and the way Hellions and Battle Hellions work, um, I'm going to say that TBT is going to be drawn more to mech versus mech, which of course we do know lasts forever. But the new way that Battle Hellion Hellions can work and the new way that Widow Mines can be used aggressively, we might see mech versus mech just take that shorter kind of game route. Um, and that's what I'm interested to see about TBT at the moment. I am very interested in that as well. And shall we introduce the players? Yeah, go ahead, Chris. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top left-hand corner as the blue Terran, we have Cloud. Yeah. Yeah. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner as the red Terran, we have Morrow. Indeed we do, and both these players, uh, well Morrow especially, uh, we've seen quite a few games from him, showing us that uh, his Heart of the Swarm knowledge and, you know, everything to do with Heart of the Swarm that he knows right now is very, very good. Couldn't agree more. It's just so good to watch at the moment. Morrow is just proving how good Terran can be with all their different builds in Heart of the Swarm. Yeah, definitely. We're already seeing a slight deviation in the builds. Um, Cloud got you know, a barracks maybe a second earlier than Morrow, but he has got this gas, you know, already mining. Um, we could see Reaper. That'd be interesting. And we do see a tech cloud Oh, going wow. Out. We're going to see an early Reaper by the looks of it. And Reaper is something we haven't seen in this tournament yet, but it does have that new upgrade with its high ground vision ability. So this could be really interesting. We'll see how much damage Cloud can really do with this. Yeah, I'm interested because Reapers aren't really used in TVT a lot um, because, you know, Marines just... just Outside of Starter just... Edition, anyway. Yeah, ex yeah <laughs> exactly. I mean, Marines just kind of own them because Marines can shoot down cliffs while Reapers have to jump up. And generally, before a Reaper can jump up, the Marines have killed them. But, of course, now the, the Reapers can see up cliffs by natural. They don't have to buy an upgrade or anything. Um... So yeah, it should be it should be an interesting change. But Morrow has scouted that tech lab, so he's got to expect Reapers. He is building Marines now. He's just making sure he has enough units, and he now knows the Reaper is there because this Reaper was able to kill off that scouting SCV, and he is sending out this Reaper. Is he going to use this Reaper for defense? Um, Defensive Reaper? Nope. There it goes. It is off across the map. It was just being a bit safe while Cloud was setting up his expansion. And while all this is going on, we are seeing Moro build his command center, just get out as many marines as he can. Yeah, definitely. That's the right thing he's got to do. But of course, the Reapers now, as you said, can see up cliffs and they can regenerate health very, very quickly when they're out of combat. So these Reapers are now almost the perfect raiding unit. This is exactly what they were meant to do in Wings of Liberty. But, you know, maybe the time just wasn't right. But now that they can regenerate combat uh, health out of combat and see up cliffs, it makes them the perfect early game unit. They are really good with this harassment. However, they have lost their building attack, which I think is the really good balancing part of that. Um, well, I suppose the patch. Here's the second Reaper using the first one to scout out for expansions. And these two are now going to head in. He is going to jump in on a blind spot by the looks of it. No, it looks like the bunker will see him. It gets off a couple shots. So really good positioning by Morrow with his buildings here, making sure that Cloud is going to have to really work to find a spot to get in. However, that combat drugs has activated, which does heal up this Reaper. Yeah, that's a very interesting animation as well. It's also got the same sound as a medevac, uh, which is... Yeah. It's just really weird to hear a Reaper doing that. Um, <laughs> but we are seeing Cloud go straight up to Starport Tech while getting some uh, getting some of these uh, Hellions out. So we, you know, he's building uh, the Tech Lab onto the Starport as well. So we're going to see Mech play from both players by the looks of it. Um, you know, which is exactly kind of what I expected. And losing one oh. Reaper there, and he's going to lose a second as well. So a fairly large investment from Cloud there lost. But it did give him that opportunity to deny the mining of Morrow on this expansion while he did get his own up. So, you know, tit for tat, basically. Uh, and we do see a raven coming out. What on Wow, earth? that's early. That's really early. This may have something... I think this may have something to do with the Widow Mine. 
I think he's getting it out for detection to stop himself wasting scans. Well, I know if he's been following this tournament, then he knows Morrow loves Widow Mines. Um, right now, Cloud's Hellions are uh, beating Morrow's Hellions, but the addition of the Marines is definitely not going to help that happen. Um, you know, Cloud just taking control of whatever he can, and he is managing to get this third base down already. Um, interesting game so far. I mean, I was a bit apprehensive about doing a TBT with Avril honestly, but this is weird. This is new. This is brand <laughs> new what we're seeing right here. Yeah. And you're seeing the second factory going down for Cloud while Mora is moving out across the map with this Marine Hellion force. He's going to attempt to just kill anything on Zelnaga Towers, anything that's out being active on the map, just taking the map control that he wants. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Morrow kind of got forced back with the map control uh, due to the Reapers in the early game, so now he's like, I, I need to know what's coming at me. I don't blame him. The starport was used to make one Raven and then move off the tech lab. It's now making Vikings. Uh, the Raven, you, you, I think you're completely right. I think the Raven was just in case Morrow went Widow Mines. And of course, Speaking now, of which, Morrow yeah. has two Widow Mines. Well, I can pretty much close my eyes and tell you that Morrow's going to go Widow Mines now. Uh, it seems <laughs> like his favourite unit. But those things are just so quick <laughs> they are really quick considering that they're a static attack unit but we're seeing two more on the way but he's going to move them out see what he can do with them he has taken both both zeldaga towers so he's denied the scouting of this and an armory is on the way for cloud so he's going to go for the, it's definitely positive he's going for this mech now and we do know that raven is out so he's going to be able to kill off these widow mines once they get off their first initial shots and I get a feeling, do you see the amount of Hellions coming out by Cloud? We're going to see Battle Hellions very soon. Yeah, definitely. And someone commented on the chat there that the Widow Mine does look like a mini Stalker, and I kind of have a, to agree. It does a little, actually. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and uh, but unfortunately for, well, for Protoss, Stalkers don't do 160 damage a shot. <laughs> <laughs> they also don't have a 40-second delay. Yeah, in... that's very true. Give and take, eh? give and take. And look at Morrow controlling the map with these Widow Mines. That's very, very impressive. I mean, he's, he's so quick off the mark in the meta game. And, uh, you know, look at that SCV just dodging those Widow Mines. There's going to be four Widow Mines parked oh, outside. Oh, and these oh, Hellions are about to... Something! Nope, oh. no, he isn't. Oh, Wait, what? He's, I'm he's sure that luring the Hellions! He's luring the Hellions! Oh, one down, two down! I think uh, that was about three shots. Three of them did go down there. Really good shots there by those Widow Mines. And they are just so perfectly in position to not hit anything that's going to that third base. Yeah, exactly. And now, of course, Cloud does know that... Um, he needs to get that Raven on the field. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, unfortunately for all Terran players, the Widow Mines are not targetable. They will literally hit the first thing they see. And, uh, you know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but generally, if you can lure a player into a Widow Mine trap, it's going to do a lot of damage. I couldn't agree more. It's so dangerous, these Widow Mines. If you can lure the units that you want in as well, like, Widow Mines are going to be really good against Ultralisks, I feel. Uh, that was their initial design uh, before the new patch, so we're going to see um, a lot of different uses for them. Uh, but we are seeing them kind of just spread out, controlling the map, and you know what? A Widow Mine is going to be such a good way of denying the expansion, and look at that. Oh, the Widow Viking. Mine managed to yeah. pick off a Viking. Um, this is really interesting play. Absolutely. I think we're going to see here uh, Cloud land some Vikings to try and kill off this Widow Mine. No, brings out the Hellions. And that Widow Mine does go down, making good use of this Raven, which does now have full energy. Yeah. So we can throw down a lot of stuff using this Raven. Really early game Raven could be really useful. Yeah, exactly. Morrow just making use of these Widow Mines, controlling the space. He's actually lucky that the Raven didn't get caught first. Um, because if that was the case, then uh, he would have lost the detection. But we'd all seen a large engagement. Hellions running straight into tanks. And that was a very, very poor decision by Cloud there. And GG! Cloud realizes that that was not good, and he's forfeited his second, second game. game. Oh. Well, Morrow wins. <laughs> uh. That is unfortunate, so unfortunately we can't bring you a second game. That makes us very sad. However, we were able to see the TVT, and it was very interesting. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm just kind of, you know the DJ We um, Day 9 kind of thing where they, uh, when Idra just randomly quit the game against uh, yes. MVP, I kind of did that involuntarily. Where you kind of, it's a bit where you got your wrist and you kind of like what? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so M Morrow takes that game two zero, and 